What's up, everybody? This is Easy Easy Street Gaming. Bring you a new Brutal Age video. This is on the new five star partner Yin. The event has started today. So you can get the new five star. It's going to be a three or four day event. Now, we were on the test server, test servers, plural. And using two instances, I figured that this might be something that a lot of people haven't seen before. So we have both instances side by side, and I'm trying to get the the new partner so we can test it out. I, th I, I got five total, and uh, two of them I got from spinning the turtles. You, you get If you spend 600 turtles, you get one free. Uh, so I got two of them that way. I got three by actually spinning the turtles, and it was over 1,000 turtles I spun. There were some guys that, that were getting... They got 10 or 12 after the first three, two or 300. So I didn't have the best luck, but I did manage to land a couple of them. So many turtles. So I finally land on one, finally, and I actually pause and let it sit there for a minute. I go get my wife and explain to her that I finally got one after a thousand, and I convince her that I bought a thousand turtles, one of my favorite pastimes. <laughs> Once I got done freaking out, I told the truth. I only, I only bought 500. So anyway. What an experience that was. Test server. If you ever have, if you ever get far enough along the game that they ask you to use the test server, always go do that. That's a great experience. So going back to Yen, leader skill, plus fifty attack on all three, but they are only affecting their own attributes, their own colors. So green only affects green. Legion skill is inspire, plus fifty morale, inspire your army if they survive the partner attack, and also you can get a lot more buffs between the the, the relationship between the partners and the in the troops in advanced research now there's several partners that you had to third awaken before they were really any good some of them became really famous after they were third awakened like the scarecrow like the like the tree man like not the green but the other colors on the little flower yin is not really like that yin is going to be powerful the second you get her i think it's a her she'll, she'll probably be top five maybe even be number one as far as i i think it's gonna be green so the third awaken isn't as major as some other third awakens are they still have an impact especially green so red and blue their second skill changes from a 35 percent chance to stun to a 70 percent chance to stun if poison is already on the enemy when the attack starts and i'll explain that more when we get into the actual attacks third awaken is a little better she'll go from clearing half of the enemy's action bar to all of it in a, in a dragonfly clipper attack and this is a good indication of what kind of strength that green is going to have because she affects the action bar of not only the enemies but herself. So that reminds me a little bit of another partner, green uh, prince. All three colors share this first skill, shadow blade. Shadow blade, you deal damage to one enemy with a 60% chance to gain stealth over uh, for one turn. Uh, when stealth, the partner cannot be selected as a priority attack target by the enemy and will receive 60% dodge. Uh, stealth ends... Once the damage is received, if dodge is successful, damage received will be reduced to zero and the action bar restored. So, pretty big. That all three of them get this. It's just a single target attack. You see them, they really do a number on any partner that they restrain. But if you're attacking a non restrained partner, at, at least at the lower levels, mine are at level 35, third awakened on a couple, and a couple are second awakened. So, they're not really, you know, uh, six star fully upgraded everything you know and, and the war patterns I have aren't, aren't really correct I just w wanted to show an example right away so they do really well they're a fast team and they don't have extremely high health although I think you can get blues health up pretty high blue blue and red share the second skill so they all share this first skill the well, second skill is toxic assault blue and red share it randomly attacks the enemy five times it can be up to five enemies each attack has a 70% chance of turning one of the target's buffs into a poison debuff for the for the buff's remaining round. If the attacked target has a poison already, there's a 35% chance to stun the target for one round. And at third awakened, this is what we were talking about earlier. At third awakened, that chance will go from 35 to 70%. This it doubles up. So not a huge increase on a third awakened. It will definitely help, and that will stun them for a round. Here you see blue restrains red, so it wasn't a real big thing, and, and it also deflected every single one of those hits. But she did like two, three hundred damage. And you'll see at the end of the video uh, when I suggest war patterns, um, it may not be the same suggestions you get from other players that do these types of things. But one of the reasons that I picked the war patterns I pick is because of the lack of damage that some of them will do. Did. Now here we have Hood Haze. Hood Haze is uh, the, the Red Yin's biggest attack, the exclusive attack. 
a six phase attack, which was pretty impressive. Um, the Aegis Tome will attack two enemies with the highest hit points. And it clears all of their buffs and all the poison debuffs. For each poison debuff that it clears, it will restore its own, I think AP means uh, uh, action bar, by 20% and health by 10%. And then it inflicts a, uh, two rounds of sleep and applies stealth to the opponents for two rounds. And you can see who I'm fighting here. This is a pretty elite team of the uh, Tusk and Chachov and etc. So really good team. Now granted, I do have some of the good partners in there with them. But just look at how these guys really just manhandle them. And uh, as far as the the sleep and the stealth, what they'll do is they'll put them asleep for two rounds, and to keep them undisturbed, they'll add stealth to it as well. So it'll be stealth and sleep. Now, if you happen to wake them up, they'll still have stealth. So it's kind of a disadvantage if that happens. But you have to you have to be mindful and try to not to wake them up while they're inside the stealth. It doesn't last very long. I'm telling you, the the yin they take care of business really fast. Gone, done, out. Elite team over. Moving on to the boomerang hit, probably the best attack overall that they ha that all the yin have. Uh, the boomerang hit randomly attacks two enemies. Uh, you're only going to see it hit, hit one here, uh, and it, it inflicts one boomerang mark on each target. It applies a stealth debuff on itself for one round after the boomerang mark. What happens is, as soon as the boomerang is put on the enemy, then the next attack that they do, they will receive all of the damage that they dealt. So if it's a multiplayer attack that does huge damage to everyone, they get it all back combined on themselves. And I'll show you an example here. I think I mentioned this earlier. This is the Ian that we were fighting. Here's the boomerang hit right here. Does 2,000 damage, not a lot. But then he attacks and he ends up doing 25,000 total team damage. He gets a 25,000 right back. I know that there's partners that do much more damage than that just in a normal uh, attack. But that was not a... Uh, this just shows you exactly what you can expect from the green yin. That was just a normal attack from, from Ian. Just imagine what happens when they get a big attack off. I'm hoping the clan monster is going to prove that to me. If I get one on the clan monster with Yin, I'll definitely have a video up for it. I'm, I'm addicted to the clan monster videos. So here we have blue yin in smoke screen. It will apply a smoke screen to itself and the ally partner other than itself by itself the same type of uh, partner it applies a stealth buff in two rounds of a shield equal to 30 percent of the respected health for three rounds if it is the only remaining partner left then it will also apply invincibility and immunity and you'll have to check on whether or not that means the whole if you have a whole team of yen if that means the whole team gets that or if it's just him if he's by himself I believe another partner does the same thing. I think it is um, the guitarist. And I believe that she'll give the, all the guitarists the same thing, which is that Nirvana effect. Here we are on the, one of the final stages in Adventure. And this is the, uh, the other account that I have uh, in the test server. So we have three yin, all three colors, and, and a ghost that's level 38 or something like that. So they're not maxed out yet. I think one of their biggest strengths is that when they have a partner restrained, so when green attacks blue, they do a lot of damage. But one of their weaknesses is just the same as the strength when green attacks red. It really it really hurts. I think the restraining system really has a big effect on, on the Amazing Yin. Now that may be because I, I don't have any of these guys at, at level 40. They're only at level 35. So that makes a big difference too, I think. And from level 35 to 40, that can mean the difference between doing three or 4,000 damage per hit or do, doing eight to 10,000 per hit. So we'll have to see how well they do once they get up to that level there. At level 35, when they're second and third awakened, pretty strong. Next one is green, Dragonfly Cutter. Um, he'll attack two enemies with the highest action bar. He'll inflict speed down on the targets for two turns. So they'll clear, clear half of their action bar and receive a percentage of the action bar. This is a huge attack. This is a huge attack, kind of like the Green Prince. So let's get into the war patterns. I know everyone wants to know what they are. And this is based on what I've seen, and I haven't really checked out what other people have said, so they may contradict, I may contradict them. Green needs to set Boomerang early, and Dragon, Dragonfly Cutter affects the action bar with speed adjustments, so I'm thinking that she's a speed. Blue, she's going to be a protective partner, so most of your protection partners, your shielders or your healers, uh, are high health. So I would, I would use he, uh, speed and high health with her. And finally, Red, purely an attack partner. But because of, because of the multiple hits, two out of the three attacks are multiple hits on the on the enemy. So to the to the stun health category. So as far as war patterns on green, I would use cat and wolf. 
Cat to get her speed up and, and use speed on the left hand, critical rate on the head, attack on the right hand. Yeah, and Cat and Wolf, and that, that should try to maximize her. And as far as Blue goes, Cat and Owl. You could also use Corsac instead of Owl because Owl is kind of hard to get sometimes. And, uh, and speed on the left hand, health on the head and, and on the right hand, right arm. And finally, for Red, I have speed on her left hand. I put speed on the left on everyone. And for, for a reason, they're already really fast. So speed on them and, and then attack percentage on the head and on the right hand. And the, the subs will be pretty important. So for green, for the subs, try to get critical rate, critical rate damage, hit point, and more speed, especially down bottom. Down bottom, you really want to try to work on trying to get uh, speed on all three of the patterns and uh, critical rate damage as well because she'll have high critical rate if you put critical rate on her head, but she'll need the damage to go with it. As far as blue, attack, resistance, and health, that will help her. And red is critical rate, critical rate damage, attack, and hit. So those are all the subs, and I also wanted to mention that you could put Sai on all three of these, and they'd be okay. Uh, you just have to get really perfect on the sub skills to, to get them to work out, to, to maximize what, what they're all about. And finally, the artifacts. Kind of tricky with the artifacts, but my general rule is, if the partner has over 20,000 health hit points, then I, I try to use the Brutal Seal. As far as the, just the basic Brutal Seal or Brutal Horn. And if they're under 20,000 hit points, then I try to use the Brutal Horn. Normally, the, uh, the, the guys under 20,000 are the big attackers, the big, the big damage. And the ones over, with a few exceptions, are usually your healers or your, your health guys. So, and, and, to add a, and to add one of the elite artifacts for green, she, she'd go well with the Brutal Horn or the Bloodstained Tusk, that, which is Tusk Horn. And uh, blue, the Brutal Seal, or the Impervious Fortress, which is Rockwell's shield. And finally for red, the Brutal Horn, or the Barbarian Machete. And as, as far as the mask that they get, the, the the artifact that you get with her, give that to Tricky. That will really upset everyone. Make it even harder to hit them. So that's all three. I think they're going to be elite partners. I think you might get a little more out of green than the rest. Maybe a lot more. So... Tell me what you think. Leave a message down in the, in the comment section. Subscribe to the channel. Appreciate everyone for watching. It's been easy. Take, take care, everyone.